This video is going to be all about interactions and therefore prototyping in Figma. And specifically, we're going to take a look at how you can build a button or create a button component that will react to being pressed down. Similar to a hover state, this is going to be done through variants and these variants are going to be connected through interactions. So it's going to be an interactive component and Based on that structure, we're going to be able to create a button that reacts to a press down state. So if I were to draw a simple scheme like this, let's say this is our button component, we will, we're going to have a hover variant, right? So let's say the button is going to become a slightly lighter when you hover your mouse over the button, then it's going to have a pressed down state as a third option. I already created a video on how to create a button with a hover state and this is going to be just one extra step. So let's get into it. With this in mind, let me just use the text tool and type in button. As you can see, the button text is very small, meaning I'm going to have to shrink this to match the size approximately so that I can remind you of the, the scheme I was talking about. We don't need this actually, but here's the anyway, here's the button text. We're going to press shift a to create a responsive object like that. So let's say this is going to be a gray button. For example, it's going to have a white text like that, and it's going to be a default state. So I'm going to name this whole auto layout button underscore default. Since this is an auto layout, we get all this nice stuff with uh, being automatically adjusted based on the text contents right so let me just round these corners a little bit like that for example and we do have a basic button right let me type in button now the button default state is going to have another kind of copy of itself which is going to be button underscore hover and this hover state is going to be lighter than the previous state so let me just do that let me just make this color slightly lighter and actually let's make this blue to make it a bit more interesting gray is kind of boring let's just use blue for now perfect this is our hover state and this is going to be our pressed down state okay this is going to be our pressed down state and this state is going to be darker than the default state right so what we are trying to mimic here is basically showing that as you hover over the button in it goes it hovers closer to you whereas if you press it down it goes farther away so that's uh, what we're going for you could also support this idea this concept by applying some effect we could for example do a drop shadow on the hover state to actually mimic floating in which case we could use the, the button color as the but, uh, as the shadow color, right? That just a very mild effect. And then we could add an inner shadow on the press down state, right? I don't know if you can see that, but there is a shadow on the top edge of from the inside of the button supposed to show that this is basically like a dent in the surface essentially we could also further support this by adding a another inner shadow that's going to be white and it's going to be at the bottom to basically show that if we consider the light coming from the top then if this is a dent then you're going to see a reflection of the light in this area and you're going to see a shadow in this area which inversely when considering a hovering button is going to be the exact opposite so we could actually just copy these right copy these effects and we could just we could just change their positions so swap the y values of these two shadows Right, so as you can see now it looks this looks plastic 3d floating all that stuff and this looks pushed back pushed into the surface let me just do a couple adjustments okay this is very simple now this is the design and the reason i'm including this is because it's very important to 
provide a good user experience. You want to differentiate between these states and you want to be aware of the general conventions regarding this. And usually when you press a button, it goes down, right? So we want to mimic that real life type of situation. Okay. Now we need to take all of this. I'm going to select all of this and we're going to turn this into a component set. We're going to create a component set, not a component, a component set. This is going to create a component with three variants. These variants, as you can see, are called button default, button hover, and then button pressed down. We could also just remove the button from the variant name. So let me just, I selected all of these, command R, and then I'm going to match the word button and I'm going to replace that with nothing, which means we're going to remove the button word, but then also we need to remove the underscore, which I'm going to be doing right now. Perfect default, hover, and then press down. Nice. So I'm going to rename this component to button with a, a pressed down state, right? That's what we're doing. This button is going to have a hover state. So let me just go to prototype. And now here we actually start defining the interaction. Here we actually start creating the interactivity. Before we do that though, let me just, let me just create a test frame and show you what I mean. If we launch the prototype now with this component placed into the test frame, then you can see that when you hover over the button, when you click it, nothing happens. So it's absolutely uninteractive. Okay. I'm just going to fill the screen, right? Nothing happens. Now I'm going to select the first variant and go to prototype. And then I'm going to connect the first variant with the second variant, right? And I'm going to say while hovering, change to property one hover. It's going to be smart animate ease out. And um, now if we actually go back to the prototype, we reset that. You can see that upon hovering, this button reacts to hovering. Okay. But nothing happens when I click it. You can hear that I'm clicking my mouse, but nothing really happens. We need to go one step further. And from the hover state, let's just think about this for a moment from the hover state. When your mouse is over the button, that's the only state from which you can go to the pressed down state. Before you press a button down, you need to hover over it. So you always need to go through the press down state from the hover state, right? I hope that makes sense. But in any case, let me just connect the hover state with the pressed down state. And I'm going to go to while pressing. Okay. While pressing property one, press down, smart animate, ease in and out. And I'm going to make these interactions quicker. So instead of 300, I'm going to do 100 on both of these interactions. Right? Perfect. And now when I go to prototype, I reset the prototype. I can then hover over the button, hold it, press down, release, and the pressed down interaction is now created. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful and I will see you in the next one.